Hey everyone, welcome to Off The Sprue episode 18. In this one we'll be looking at creating water effects. This is a topic that is often requested. Many questions about how to do this, whether it's standing water, whether it's splashing water. We're very fortunate nowadays to have products that will allow us to do all these different kinds of water effects. And in this build, I used it to create a rice paddy. For me, it was a long process of trial and error, but I've used water effects successfully in many different builds, from splashing water to uh, ocean water, still standing river water, and uh, it really adds value to uh, any, any diorama build. Let's look at some of the products that you can use. I distinguish between two different groups of products. The first is products that create water volume or depth, and the second is a group of products that will create water surface texture like ripples and splashes. To create water volume, you've got two options. The first is these um, acrylic gels from AK and Vallejo. I prefer the Vallejo one. I've had the best results uh, using it. Also remember that you need to do multiple pours, two to three millimeters deep with these products. The second option that will allow us to do deep pours, in other words, one single pour, is epoxy resin. Now this is usually a two-part product, one part resin and one part hardener. And this has really been my go-to product for creating volume uh, with uh, water effects. Now once you've poured one of these products, you've got a volume of water, still standing water, and if that is what you were trying to achieve, then good for you. You can stop at this point. However, if you want to create some surface texture like ripples or splashes, you need to go one step further. And this is where the second group of products come in. You can use uh, some of these colored water gels. Uh, they're acrylics and uh, they dry to a semi-transparent state. This one is for swamps. You can also use a clear gel like this one from Vallejo. Uh, this is white at the moment, but when this dries, it dries completely transparent and you can use this to create surface ripples for your rivers and your ocean effects. I also like this product, it's Super Potch Gloss from Vallejo. Now, my friends in Europe and the United States uh, might know a different product called Mod Potch and this does exactly the same. A few months ago, I also started playing with uh, UV resin. Now, this stuff is magic. It's a, it's a liquid, and once it, it's exposed to UV light, like this flashlight, it dries instantly and completely transparent. You can also combine it uh, with this uh, UV tape, and it'll allow you to pour patterns on the tape and then just peel it off. You then also get uh, surface effects like this foam effect from Vallejo. And really for best results, all these products work well in combination. Each one has its specific purpose. Now let's look at the basic technique. Whether it's ocean or river or a still standing puddle, my workflow for creating uh, water effects is basically the same. The first thing you'll need is a container. We'll be pouring liquids, and for this you'll need a sealed container. Whether you remove the sides or, uh, or not, uh, that's up to you. But first I will start with the groundwork, let's say the river bed, and uh, also the, uh, the vegetation that's partly submerged in the water. The next step is to pour epoxy resin, either colored or clear, up to the depth that I require. Finally, once the resin is cured, I will apply acrylic gel or UV resin uh, to the very top and that will form my surface texture like ripples or splashes. And really this is the way I approach all my uh, water effects. So let's get to the example in this build. Now, I really want to encourage you to do test pours. Uh, for, for most of my builds, I will pour these little discs just to test whether the color that I'm using is working correctly, whether the surface texture and the vegetation that I plan to use will, uh, will work as I, as I plan it. Sometimes water effects are unpredictable and uh, there's no undo button for this stuff. If you work months on a model and, and you pour the wrong color of resin, well, unfortunately then you're stuck. To simulate the rice plants, I used 100 millimeter grass flock from Green Stuff World. This is cut to the correct length and then this was uh, glued to the diorama base with PVA glue. Before you can pour any of the water products, you need to prepare the surface, the riverbed, 
In this case, I had to prepare all the uh, semi-submerged objects like this uh, monkey bridge made from real bamboo, as well as some of the uh, vegetation, some of the leaves, some of the exposed roots. And uh, this needs to be done beforehand. Also, we will be pouring liquid, so this will require a sealed tray. In this case, the, the diorama foam base has to fit very snugly inside, so there are no gaps at the side um, when we start pouring the, uh, the resin. A very important step is to properly seal the, um, all the hollows and the areas where the resin will be poured, and for this I used an acrylic gel like that from AK. This is a very important step because once you pour the resin uh, and it flows into the wrong areas of your diorama, there is no fixing that. So make sure that you seal everything properly. On a previous build, I didn't seal the foam properly. I just kept on pouring and pouring, pouring resin, and it was all accumulating in the bottom below the foam. So make sure that you properly seal your diorama base. Next, we'll need to prepare the resin, and for this, we'll need the two-part epoxy resin product. We'll need some paint to uh, color it, a container, a stirrer, and of course, also your gloves. Always wear gloves when you mix this product. Usually, this is mixed uh, one to one in one to one ratio. It is then poured very carefully to make sure that it doesn't spill or drip anywhere it shouldn't. And uh, really, you allow gravity to do the rest. It needs to settle by itself into all the detail in your foam base. Pour this very slowly, take your time. It is also important to remember that unlike acrylic gels, epoxy resin needs to be poured in a single pour. And really at this point I should have taken heed of my own advice because I did the exact opposite. Yes, after a few hours I had an uneven surface and surface bubbles and plenty of them. The problem is that I poured my resin in two pores and uh, one part was already cured and the other part wasn't. I moved the, the diorama base and the result was an uneven pour. In addition to that, the, uh, the color came out in a ugly slimy green and not the, the coffee brown that I was expecting. Obviously this was a bit of a dilemma and uh, I had to fix this. The first step was to take care of the uneven surface and for this I used Super Potch Gloss and uh, I started applying this product in dabbing motions with a brush to the surface of the cured resin and when this stuff dries, it dries completely transparent giving the, uh, the impression of moving water. Next I had to fix the color problem and for this I went to my tried and tested Vallejo Stillwater Acrylic and also a different paint, in this case Flat Earth. Prepare this product, you pour some into a container, you add your paint, just a few drops, and then you uh, properly mix this. It's very important to make sure that this is properly mixed through. Just like the epoxy resin, this is now poured. Very importantly, this needs multiple pours and no thicker than one to two millimeters at a time. And this is very important because if you pour this stuff too thick, it will dry unevenly and that will result in cracking. If you do get some, uh, some bubbles, use a wooden stirrer while the product is wet and just remove them. And uh, eventually I did two or three pours and I was pleasantly surprised to find that the uneven ugly surface was now properly textured and uh, it looked a lot better. The last step was to add some ripples around the water buffalo and the farmer. And for this, I used some super parch glass and mixed in a lighter colored paint. Now, unfortunately, the, uh, the applying and reapplying of water products did lead to some creeping of the products up the, uh, the grass flock. However, this usually happens anyway, and uh, I don't have a real solution for this. However, I'm happy with the results that I got. It really adds uh, a lot of value, a lot of realism to the diorama, and I'm absolutely thrilled to bits. This was a super build. So to end this video, let's look at a few tips. 
Acrylic fluids need to be poured in multiple pores, no more than two to three millimeters deep. If you do not do this, you might find that the product will crack. Also, do not try to accelerate drying by using a desk fan or any, any similar technique. Epoxy resin, on the other hand, is applied in a single go, a single pour, and once you've poured it, leave it the hell alone. Honestly, do not move that tray again. Cover it uh, against dust and leave it to cure for at least 24 hours. When epoxy resin is wet and you notice some surface bubbles, you can use a heat gun and uh, it will uh, pop those little bubbles. But just keep in mind that the heat might also burn your diorama vegetation. I found that out the hard way when the, the grass flock started to, to melt uh, and I had to reapply those. Also, always test your surface water effects before you use them in your final diorama. You can rather do five or six different tests and arrive at the correct solution than mess up your actual diorama. Guys, throughout this build and in this tutorial, I used a number of different products. You can find them all at Supernova Studio. Go over to their website. They stock a wide range of very high quality products. Lindy is extremely efficient, very helpful, and uh, I can highly recommend them. So this brings us to the end of Off The Sprue episode 18. I can't believe we produced 18 different videos in the course of this build. Thank you to everyone who followed along. Thank you for all your wonderful comments, uh, all your encouragement. Uh, I will definitely be keeping this up, making more videos in uh, the course of my future builds and uh, hoping to see you again soon.